Welcome to part two of Full of Grace, the second greatest story never told. Uh, in part two, you're going to uh, learn about some of the more recent apparitions. I'm going to share with you some of my personal experiences at some of the apparition sites. You're going to see actual footage of uh, an apparition occurring. And uh, you are going to learn what it takes for an apparition to be approved. And uh, yeah, that's that sounds like plenty to do. Okay, I'd like to start you off with the apparitions in Zaitun, Egypt. Um, Zaitun was always believed to be the place where Mary and Joseph brought Jesus when they escaped to Egypt so that Herod uh, could not kill Jesus. You may remember from the Bible that Herod had the firstborns of every family. The newborns were all killed. And an angel appeared to Joseph in the middle of the night and said, you got to get out of town. And they went to Egypt. In um, 1918, the Blessed Mother appeared to a family and said, this is the spot. It was in Zaitun. This is where we, Joseph and I, brought Jesus and we lived here. And I would love for you to build uh, a church on this sacred spot where we lived. And the family gave the land to the church and they built a beautiful church there. And true enough to her word, 50 years later, Mary appeared. What you are looking at is not a painting, it's not a drawing, it's an actual photograph. The outrageousness of the Zaitun apparitions is that Mary was not seen by one or two, she was seen by millions. She would appear over the roof of this church looking like a real person. In fact, people that didn't know what was going on would walk by and swear, oh my God, there's a woman on the roof of the church. How would she get there? And I hope she doesn't jump. Um, when Mary would appear, she would look very real, lifelike. She would be uh, surrounded by um, doves that would come out of the sky around her. Uh, people who would see her would be miraculously healed. There was an inexplainable scent of roses in the air. Um, Mary was seen by millions of Egyptians. Now remember, this is a country that's not even primarily Catholic. There are Coptic Catholics there, but uh, millions of non-believing uh, Egyptians saw her. Uh, they estimate that at that time, one in 10 Egyptians had seen Mary between actually going to Zaitun and seeing her on TV. Um, what happens is, is that uh, Zaitun is uh, not the only um, apparition of Mary in Egypt. It's a country she obviously loves very much. And she has appeared numerous times. And all of these apparitions in Zaitun have been investigated and approved by the Coptic Catholic Church there. Mary came to Nicaragua. She warned people. She said, look, you're all Catholic here but you don't love each other. You're being divided politically. You're being divided into two camps and your hatred of each other is growing so much that if you don't cut it out, you're going to end up in a horrible civil war. And people really didn't listen. And sure enough, Nicaragua was torn by a horrific war in the 1980s in which uh, so many of their people died and uh, they, to this day, have not recovered from the damaging effects of the death of so many people and the devastation of their country. Um, they didn't listen. Mary appeared um, very soon after in Rwanda, Africa. I hope you're getting a sense of how broad her vision is, how Mary is looking to be the mother of everyone uh, in the world. She comes to Africa for two reasons. Primarily to save the African people. Mary foretells two horrific events when she appears to these young girls in Rwanda. Um, she foretells number one. She says, if the young people of this African continent do not learn to control themselves sexually, you're all going to end up dying. Mary tragically and accurately foretold the horrific AIDS epidemic in which the devastation done to the African subcontinent is, is horrible. Um, to this day, I have recently been to Uganda, a country neighboring Rwanda, with some volunteers. We were building an, 
uh, a clinic for uh, AIDS orphans. And um, when I was there, I remember, gosh, they didn't want me to carry the bags of cement. They didn't want me lugging the bricks. And I was like, why? I go to the gym. I work out. What's the problem here? Well, the reason was they didn't want me to exert myself is because in their country, I'm an elder. And the reason that I'm an elder is because in their country, um, the life expectancy is 28 years old. Um, you don't actually see anybody that age. It's all children, half of whom have been born with the AIDS virus and a lot of old ladies. Um, so the devastation Mary foretold uh, wasn't heeded and they definitely have suffered because of it. Second reason why Mary is in Rwanda is because she's trying to save the people of that country. She told these young visionaries, she said, look, you're all Christian here. You're either Catholic or Anglican, but your tribal hatred is what's going to destroy you. So in Nicaragua, she was warning them about political hatred being something that can wipe out a country. Uh, here she's saying the tribal hatred. M Mary accurately foretold the Rwandan genocide, a horrific event in history where the Hutu tribe armed with machetes systematically attempted to wipe out the Tutsi tribe. It was a devastation of hundreds of millions of Rwandans. Mary foretold that the streets and rivers would flow with blood and they literally did. And uh, it was something that she tried to warn them of and protect them from, but was not heeded. Um, listen to what Mary says to these visionaries. The world is in revolt against God and you are on the edge of catastrophe. Now, what I've shared with you in part one and this beginning of part two are what I found to be the most dramatic, powerful, and interesting of the apparitions, but they are not by any means the only ones. What I'd like to do is really quickly run through with you some additional ones that are known by Catholics as the major apparitions. Going back as far ago as uh, Spain in 40 AD, England, India, Russia, Vietnam. These are places where you can't believe she was there and that far away in, in Asia, but she was. Poland, Brazil, France, again, you learned in part one of three other major French apparitions. Knock Ireland. Uh, this is a very big shrine and very important to Irish people. Why? Because Mary saved them through her apparition there. When Mary was appearing in Ireland, people from the European continent would come over to Ireland to be there as pilgrims to that shrine. And when they were there, they saw the horrible suffering of the Irish people from the result of the potato famine that was going on. And then people came back to Europe and raised money and contributed help. And they literally saved, Mary saved the uh, Irish people through her apparition there. And to this day, they, they reverence that apparition. Mary appeared in Italy, in Ecuador again. Uh, she came to Belgium, not once but twice, to warn the people of Europe of the coming of World War II. She came to Belgium, a country that Hitler bulldozed through on his way to France in World War II, and she tried to warn people. She named Hitler by name. She tried to say, you didn't listen to Fatima. You didn't change your ways. There is no God at the center of this European continent and devastation is on the horizon. Please, please listen to me and change your ways. Mary foretold that there would be an event. She said there's going to be something appearing over the skies of Europe. And when that happens, that will be your sign that you need to hurry up and change. Okay, and there was an inexplainable lights in the sky, blood red lights in the sky over Europe. Some scientists tried to say that it was the European, uh, it was the Northern Lights, but we know now that it, it wasn't. It was something else. But I'll tell you this, it is known that Hitler saw those blood red skies and he told his generals, now we will go to war. 
Mary tried to save all of Europe from those apparitions in Belgium, but they did not listen to her. Uh, Rosa Mystica apparition in Italy, Amsterdam she came to, Akita, Japan, uh, Britannia, Venezuela. Poor Venezuela has suffered horribly. Mary foretold that to that very devout Catholic country that trouble was coming. And we have seen this in the news now for over 10 years, the suffering, the repression at the hands of their government, um, what they've been through there. Syria, Mary came to Syria and foretold uh, what was coming there. This has been in the news for years, suffering at the hands of a brutal dictator that kills his own people, ISIS, the warfare that has occurred there uh, with the Russians and everything else. Mary said, look, this is, you don't live right in this country and you've got to change your ways or trouble is coming. And very sadly, she was absolutely right. South Korea, she appeared in, Ecuador, Argentina. Now, I myself, oh, first of all, she has uh, approved the, the first and only approved apparition in the United States. The church has approved Mary coming to this nun in Wisconsin in 1859. Now, I myself wanted, as I learned more and more about these apparitions, because my studies, I mean, how, how did this all happen? Well, over the course of my life, I heard of this one and that one and this one. And I decided a few years ago to just really look into how big is this phenomena of Mary appearing. And um, I definitely, once I began to learn more and more, I wanted to go to more and more of these places. Uh, I've discovered that I really don't have the money or the time to do that. But I have been to a couple of places. Um, one is in... Cochabamba, Bolivia. I have a project there. All the money I make for doing public speaking is for my charity. And we have a couple of projects in Cochabamba, Bolivia. And when I went there, I was informed that they had had an apparition. In fact, now I go there every year at the time of the remembrance of that apparition. The apparition is called Urcupina, which is a Quechua Indian word that means she has gone up into the sky. Mary appeared in the 1500s to a young girl there. And to this day, they reverence uh, that apparition every year around the middle of August. Uh, Cochabamba, Bolivia is uh, a city that has the largest statue of Christ in the world. Uh, the Blessed Mother is very much loved there. She has her own radio station. When the... Um, Special celebration is coming, uh, billboards go up. This is the shrine that hundreds of thousands of people come and pray at. There is the procession of Our Lady through the streets, followed by a parade of uh, countless numbers of uh, groups that celebrate both Mary and their culture with dancing and with music. I also got given the chance to go to Medjugorje. Now, Medjugorje, as of the time of this uh, taping of my presentation for YouTube, um, has not been approved. This is in the year, as of the year 2020. It has not been approved for any bad reason, basically because it's still going on. Uh, again, I hope that people will be watching this presentation far into the future, but as of 2020, um, the apparition has, mm, is still happening, which is phenomenal. It started in 1981 and that Mary would appear all these years later, nearly 40 years of apparitions of Mary appearing every day at quarter to six, tw I'm sorry, 20 to six to the visionaries has never been, hap never happened before in all of history. Medjugorje Again, not approved, alleged apparition. Um, it was outrageous because Mary was appearing smack in the middle of the communist godless world. She appeared to six children. They were very young at the time. And um, she has been giving them secrets which have not been revealed to the world as of this taping in 2020. Okay, um, 
there have been many people visiting there that have experienced healings, that have experienced uh, tremendous conversions in their life. It's a remote village. When I went there, I was amazed at how remote it was and, um, and the faith of the people. When I went, I actually stayed with a family in that village. The peacefulness of the place you could definitely feel. Um, the goodness of the people that is like a little bit of heaven on earth. Now, why would Mary appear in this remote mountain village? Because I believe that they had a very deep faith going back very far. In 1933, they erected a cross on one of the hills uh, overlooking their mountain to commemorate the 1900th anniversary of the, the death of Jesus on the, the cross, of him saving us through the sacrifice of his life. And um, they consecrated their village to God. They had a very deep faith. They built a very big church because they felt in prayer that someday people would be coming to their church. They were actually kind of laughed at by other villages who said, why are you building such a big church? Who do you think you are? But it was all about faith. So I think the faith of those people through long before Mary would appear there um, was one of the reasons why God blessed that part of the world. Uh, the young visionaries pray, paid a terrible price. The communist government of what was then Yugoslavia, a communist country, was determined to squash this. Again, the last thing communists want is a religious revival, and those visionaries suffered. But Mary would appear to them wherever they were, whether it was on a mountaintop, whether it was in the church, or whether it was in a jail cell, and they couldn't be squashed. Uh, and people kept coming, and eventually the government had to accept that this wasn't going away. Um, that, so the apparition in a communist country was truly radical, along with, as I told you, the, the fact that it happens every single day to the visionaries. Some of the visionaries have received all their secrets and have not had uh, apparitions for years. Um, and, and some of them still see uh, Mary every, every day. When I went there, I was impressed with the faith of the visionaries. I was impressed with some of the signs of a uh, supernatural occurrence happening there. Um, for example, there is uh, the miracle of the sun. There are times when people are able to stare at the sun for long periods of time and there's no damage done to their eyes. There is uh, the phenomena of things turning from silver to gold. It actually happened to me. Someone had given me a, a silver medal on a, a chain um, and it was silver when I brought it and when I came home, it was it had turned to gold. Um, I would say the biggest sign of, a, of, of, of Mary's occurrence is the, is the faith of the people there that live there and the people that come there and the conversions that happen. Um, I want to share with you why I believe that Mary really is there. I was given the trip. I was in a band with a guy whose mother was into this and really wanted him to go and he wasn't that interested. And, Mary, and the woman felt like, well, if Tony goes, he'll go. So I got given the trip and I felt because I was given such an amazing opportunity, I wanted to share it. So I invited the people of the parish I was ministering in and belonged to, Our Lady of Lords in Queens Village, um, I shared it with them and said, look, I'm going to see Mary. Is there anything that you would like me to bring to her? And I collected like a whole sack of letters, of petitions, things that people wanted to bring to the Blessed Mother. Um, I was there for Holy Week. And the tradition of those people of all ages is that on Good Friday, they would walk barefoot up Cross Mountain and remember the sacrifice of Jesus on that special day. Well, I wanted to honor the people's requests and their traditions, actually. Uh, and I am basically a person who lives barefoot as much as possible. But I'm not usually used to navigating rocky, mountainous terrain barefoot. So I thought I should practice. 
So on Holy Thursday, I walked up the other mountain uh, on the side of Medjugorje. It was called Apparition Hill because it is where for a long time the apparitions of Mary occurred. And I brought with me the sack of petitions that, that I had collected. And I made it to the top of the mountain and on that very peaceful and beautiful spot, I decided to look and see what was inside this sack. And as I began to read people's stories, people's letters to Mary, I discovered how much hidden secret pain was there in the lives of people I thought I knew. And I was really overwhelmed. And I started praying and I'm like, my God, what am I going to do? There's so much pain here. And then I realized, well, they weren't asking me to do anything except to bring these to Mary. So my prayer shifted and I started to just say, Mary, these people, there's so much they wanted to bring to you, so much they're suffering through. What do you want to give them? What do you want for them? And you could say I'm crazy and I don't really care because I heard as clear as anything real I've ever experienced a woman's voice saying at that moment, I want them to know my son. I knew that that voice was not something that came from within my own mind because it sounded like a woman's voice. And more importantly, Jesus is my Lord, my savior, my best friend. Uh, he is not my son. Only God the Father and Mary can say that. So I knew where it came from. And I have to tell you, honestly, all these years later, as I did all this investigating of all these apparitions, what I've discovered is that is the point of all of this happening. All that you have learned in these two videos, everything is happening so that the world will come to Jesus. Some people say that we Catholics worship her and they put us down for that and we don't worship her and she doesn't want to be worshiped. She only wants people to, to come to be close to her son, Jesus. Mary's earthly life was to bring Jesus to the world. Her supernatural mission is to bring the world to Jesus. And all of these apparitions are happening so that this will happen, that people will come to her son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus. If you get a chance, go on the internet and all over, you will find the messages that Mary has been giving these visionaries for, for 40 years. Um, they are very basic. They are in sync with Catholic teaching and they are very powerful. And they almost always end with the words, thank you for responding to my call. And Mary is... It's interesting because Mary is a mother. And over the course of all these apparitions, Mary acts like a mother. All the different things that a mother has in her little toolbox, her little kit of all the things she does to help and love her children. Sometimes a mother will be very kind like in Medjugorje, and very nurturing, very supportive. Sometimes a mother will be involved in healing her children when they get hurt. And Mary has certainly done that over the course of the apparitions. And sometimes a mother will be very stern and very strong and just be like, just you wait till your father gets home. And that's happened too. So it's beautiful to watch our, our mother Mary acting over the course of these apparitions so much like a typical mother. I thought you might enjoy seeing some actual footage of one of these alleged apparitions. There is a movie out there called The Triumph. It's the story of a young American young man who had a lot of struggles in his life. Um, I guess it's out in the open because it was a film, including drugs. And one of the things the family did to try and help him was to bring him to Medjugorje, which ironically has a huge, very successful ministry of people overcoming addiction right there in Medjugorje. And when he was there, he got to be part of one of the 
apparitions. One of the visionaries, Muriana, sees Our Lady, um, or was seeing Our Lady at the time, the second day of every month. And what you're going to see is, you're not going to see Mary, but you're going to see something happening. In this video, it shows you what the young man is experiencing. And also, over the course of the years, her experience of Mary. And I think you could see from her demeanor that something wonderful and amazing is, is happening for her in the moments of this apparition. I'm not going to say much more, just to let you experience it for yourself. Now I'm wondering if you're, after taking all this in, I'm wondering if anybody experiencing this presentation is thinking, boy, I would really love it if Mary would come to me. Well, after you learn about what they went through, you might not feel exactly the same way. They suffered a lot. Every one of the visionaries paid a price for their experience. And Mary always told them that it would never be easy for them, that their reward would come in heaven. What was the nature of the suffering of the visionaries? Because their courage is one of the most wonderful parts of this story, of, of these miraculous occurrences. One, most often they were children. They were very young and they lived in remote farm rural communities. And say a child would experience an apparition and come home to their parents and say, Mommy, 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 I, I just met our Blessed Mother Mary. She just came to me. And the mother would be like, Stop lying. Don't you ever say that again. But Mommy, Mommy, she really came to me. And maybe she, the child would even be slapped and told, Just wait until your father gets home. And then the, the child would tell their father. And the, and the parents, why would the parents be responding like this? Because in a remote rural community, the last thing you want to do is be rejected by your neighbors. And people can be weird. People can get jealous. And parents would be very upset that if their family was being visited by Mary, that others would turn on them and they'd be alone in their community. And so first of all, so a child gets rejected by their parents uh, who refuse to believe them. Then they would go through rejection at the hands of their siblings who like, I know you, you're not that great. Why would Mary appear to you but not me? Then they would get rejected by their friends for the same reason. Then their local mayor would turn on them because this word went out that Mary was appearing. People would be coming in and there'd be littering and there'd be traffic and there'd be all kinds of things. And then they got turned on by their parish priest because more often than not, the priest would be very scared about having to go to his bishop and the bishop might give him a hard time and say, why is Mary appearing in your church, in your community? So everyone gave them a hard time. So their, um, mm, their, their courage would be, uh, and what they went through is a beautiful part of, of, of this story. Okay, so let me tell you about the investigation process. Again, every single event that I covered over the course of these two videos has been investigated and approved by the Catholic Church. Now, before you're thinking, well, of course they want to approve it. They love Mary. Uh, no. This is a very rigorous process, and in some ways, the Church has always acted like they don't want these special, miraculous occurrences. Okay? So the last thing the Catholic Church wants to do, they are the Church of Christ in the world. And they do not want to take any chance that they'd be embarrassed. So they investigate these things thoroughly, okay? There is no big 
you know, we want as many apparitions as possible. No, you could be sure if the Catholic Church is saying this happened, that it happened. Okay, now what does it take for an apparition to be approved? It's a very rigorous investigation. First, they've got to determine, can it be explained by science? Okay, or is this a supernatural event? And if it's supernatural, is it coming from God or from the devil? Okay, uh, they consider that possibility. So these are the criteria for an apparition to be approved. One, if there are multiple visionaries, they all have to be saying the same thing. Okay, there can't be tremendous disparity between what they say. Second of all, they can't be saying anything against what the Catholic religion believes. Okay, that is in the gospel. They can't be doing it for money. They can't be doing anything immoral either during the uh, apparitions or after. And they can't be crazy. In the modern era, the apparitions of Garabandal and Medjugorje, the alleged apparitions, the visionaries were examined very thoroughly by psychiatrists and proved to be completely sane. But you can't have crazy people uh, running around as a, you know, and claiming that they're a visionary. And there has to, has to be positive things coming out of it. People changing their lives, people coming to greater faith and greater love in their lives. You can't have people starting a doomsday cult as a result of uh, the Virgin Mary's apparition. That would be a sign it wasn't authentic. Now, these apparitions are accompanied by uh, supernatural phenomena. Again, we all, going back over the stories, remember there was the the acting, uh, the sun behaving in, in inexplainable ways at Fatima and Donglu. There is the waters that come out of um, Lords. There is the uh, healings that take place at Lords. Why is God doing this? God is doing this because He wants to use the apparitions as a way to show His power over physical reality. The world of our senses, the Catholic Church. The teaching of Christ all acknowledges, and science increasingly is verifying all this, and almost all religions point to the fact that reality is bigger than what can be perceived with the senses. And our Lord God uses the apparitions as a way to teach people of this and to show his power over physical reality from the larger reality from which God lives and operates from. There is also the phenomena I want to share with you of the fact that around the world, there are almost every country has statues of Mary that are miraculously and inexplainably shedding tears. Um, tears of either human tears or human blood. Uh, some of them have been proven to be fraudulent, but overwhelmingly, uh, they have been proven to be the real deal in that the tears have been investigated by scientists. And uh, when they are investigated, they are tears, they are human, that's human tears. When it's blood, it's human blood. And when the blood has been evaluated, I want to share with you this particular insight. Some of you may watch on YouTube or my live presentation of Living Bread, which is the story of the Eucharistic miracles in which blood would uh, come from a consecrated host or consecrated wine would become blood. And whenever that blood is scientifically evaluated, it's always the same blood type, which is AB positive, a very rare blood type that when it usually comes uh, in a person, it's often from the Middle East. And these uh, the blood that comes out of these statues, concrete, ceramic, various kinds of statues, it's always also AB positive. Now, why is Mary crying? She's crying because we won't. Because we could be living a way of life on this planet of so little faith and so little love and so miserable, and we don't cry. But Mary cries for us. 
that she knows what our lives would be like if we would just allow Jesus into our hearts, if we would live in the godly way that we were made to, and the fact that we suffer so badly for refusing to do that, it moves her to tears. There is also the phenomena of statues of Mary surviving uh, unbelievable phenomena. I will never forget being in Biloxi, Mississippi shortly after Hurricane Katrina. We were bringing a truckload of supplies for people there in need. And it's on the Gulf, uh, that city. And there were barges of casinos that were on their side, washed up on the shore. Um, and yet, at the church on the, on the shoreline, there was a statue of Mary that was unaffected, horrific damage all around, and a statue of Mary um, unaffected. There was uh, the hurricane that affected Houston, and there was damn everything was destroyed, but the statue of Mary was intact. What I'd like to show you is right near where I live in Queens, Hurricane Sandy devastated, devastated the shore of Brooklyn. And there is, as you could see, all this damage that was done either from the storm or from a fire that broke out that nobody could come and put the fire out because they couldn't get access to uh, the Rockaways. Um, and, and yet the Statue of Mary facing the ocean was untouched. To this day, the people brought that statue inside their church and is a sign to them of, of Mary looking after them and helping them to rebuild and being there. And this has happened numerous, maybe countless places. As you've listened to all the apparitions, maybe what I found over the years of presenting this is that people are wondering, why haven't I heard about this? Why doesn't the church talk about this more? Why is it that so much has happened and this is all so unbelievable? Um, you know, why don't we hear about it? There's a lot of reasons for that. One is I think people are afraid to share um, stories of supernatural phenomena. Um, Catholics have tried to fit in in, in the United States, maybe. Um, nothing makes you stand out more than supernatural miracles. I think it's connected to the fact that very tragically, so many Catholics don't even believe that the uh, that the Eucharist is really Jesus' body and blood. That what happens at Mass, when you receive communion, you are receiving Jesus himself. It's not uh, a symbol of him. It's not a remembrance of him. It really is him. So I think, I think that that same kind of reluctance to admit that we really, really believe as Catholics that there is more to life that is unexplainable, that we have a God that can act in these ways, that he is that big and that powerful. Also, I think maybe the reasons why Catholics don't promote the apparitions is because, well, we believe in the most amazing, miraculous thing in the world that happens at every Mass, when on every altar, bread and wine become the body and blood of the Savior. That's all the miracle we really need. All of this is extra to get us to, you know, grow in faith. But maybe it's because we have the ultimate miracle um, that we don't promote it. I don't know. Maybe people are afraid. I think people don't like the messages. People are kind of full of themselves in our modern era. We have so many things that we have achieved. And people don't want to hear like, well, you got it completely wrong. And Mary is basically trying to help us and say, look, all of this, you're moving real fast and you're just moving the wrong way. And this is not the right way to live. This isn't what you were created for as a species. This is not the way life in this reality, this simulation, this world is meant to be lived. You've got to change. And people don't want to hear it. What's beautiful about the apparitions one of the many things that's beautiful about it is that you learn that God is not just looking upon humanity and looking down on us and saying, gee, show, I sure hope they figure it out someday. What God is doing is he sends the mother. And some people say to me, Tony, well, if this is all so important and we're screwing this up so badly, why doesn't Jesus get involved himself? 
But think about the beauty of why he sends his mother. We are a species that so desperately needs our mother. When we're born, okay, where would a baby be without their mother? That's not true of every species. Some species, a newborn pops out and they're ready to roll. Humans, the way we are designed by God, a baby is helpless without the care of their mother for years. And so our desperate need of our mothers, what happens is, is that when we lose our way, God sends the mother to straighten us out, to bring us back to where we're supposed to be, to give us his great love flowing through her. And Mary reveals over the course of these apparitions where it is that humanity needs to change. We are basically at war with each other, with our world, and what Mary reveals is the peace plan, the correction for our answer. And if I had to summarize hundreds of years of apparitions and countless messages from Our Lady what is the peace plan? What is the hope we have? And if I had to summarize it in two words, pray and love. Pray, why is that such a big deal? Because when you pray, you're aligning your thoughts with God's thoughts. When you love, you're aligning your actions with God's actions. And when I say prayer, there are two forms of prayer that Mary has definitely let us know that there are special portals of power that are there and they are the rosary and the Eucharist. The Eucharist because of course Jesus himself instituted it and it's his way of being among us forever and the rosary because it is the story of Jesus and Mary, the two most important, powerful people that ever lived and walked this earth. It is the snapshots of their lives. And in remembering their lives and them, okay, it is a tremendous portal of power. So we take our prayer and we take our love and we give it in faith to Jesus. The evil in the world is too great for us humans to believe that we can defeat it. What we need to remember is that her son Jesus has already defeated the evil and it is our blessing and privilege to be the ones that he works through to manifest it within reality. So you consecrate all your prayer and all your love to her son Jesus. Remember, there is no such thing as a wasted prayer. There is no such thing as an insignificant act of love. Every prayer and every loving act, as small as it might be, creates ripples of hope. They have an effect on the physical and the spiritual realm. It is quite the blessing that we have to be able to be those instruments whereby uh, change can happen and be part of what it is that her son is doing in this world. I hope through these presentations that you will be more, you know, aware of the fact that reality is bigger than what we think it is and that there's so much more going on. I'd like to wrap this presentation up by sharing with you um, a couple of photos of, of, of things of what I think is this is all about. When I was filming the picture of Our Lady of Lords, this is right down the block from where I live in Queens Village. And when I took this picture, I thought it was really fitting that this gentleman came over and he tipped his hat and he made the sign of the cross and he wasn't going to walk by a statue of Mary without giving her honor and tribute. And it's the faith of a simple man like this with a simple loving gesture that this story is all about. I took this picture in Medjugorje. It's a man from the Philippines. And I watched him as he was walking up the mountain, which I already told you is very mountainous, very rocky, very treacherous. And he was careful. He was wanting to make sure that his little boy, like he wouldn't fall and the little kid would get hurt. But he kept his eyes on the cross. And he had the biggest smile on his face. And I knew from his face that he was experiencing all this inner joy of I'm bringing my little boy 
to the place where heaven touches the earth. And he will be blessed forever because of that. It's faith of a man like this that this story is all about. It's all about a little village in the middle of Nicaragua, in the middle of nowhere in Nicaragua, called Amatitan. I visited this village. I go to Nicaragua every summer. And in this village, they really suffered as a result of some of the bad weather that's come to Nicaragua. And I visited this village. They didn't have a church. Um, but they told me the story of what happened there because it's the shell of a church building. And they told me what happened. There was a woman that received in a dream a message from Mary. She said, there's this village called the Matitan and they don't have a church and I would like you to build them one. And this woman faithfully emptied her bank account and she started to build this church for these people. And then she passed away and she had no more money anyway. And they don't have mass in the building because when I was there, they, they only had the four walls. But I watched the people gather to pray together outside the walls of the church I watched how one family would contribute a table to be used like an altar. Another family contributed a Bible that was the most beat up old Bible you could imagine, but it was all they had. Someone else donated a candle. Somebody else brought together some flowers from their garden. And I watched this woman process reverently from her home to that little gathering space with the statue of Mary. It was her job to keep the statue safe. If you can look at it very closely, you can see that it's kind of beaten up, but it was all they had. But it meant the world to them that they would have a way of representing that the Blessed Mother would be joining them that day in their prayer. It's faith like people like this that this is all about. I want to tell you something else. I came back after meeting these people to the United States. I came and I hit up a uh, a church to, uh, where people had a good amount of money. It's uh, Our Lady Queen of Martyrs in Centerport and uh, on Long Island. And, and they raised the money and they finished the church and now they have mass there every Sunday. This whole story is about the faith of people who come up to me at every single presentation I do. And they, they tell me um, the story of Mary in their life. And I feel really blessed in that I get to hear so many stories from people who just know that Mary, when they prayed to her, stepped in and made a miracle happen in their personal lives. And those personal stories are just as amazing as all this supernatural phenomena in these other events I've told you about. Just one that I'd like to tell you about is this couple here. I love the way they came so early to make sure they got good seats for my presentation and they stayed so late waiting for everyone else to leave so they could have some private time with me to tell me their Mary story. They told me about how when they were a young couple, their first baby was born with problems. And it was the night when the baby got so sick, they brought him to the hospital and the doctors told them, we don't think he's going to make it. And they told me about how they came home and she was not well. The mo young mother was not well. So she sat in her chair and prayed the rosary. And he took a statue of Jesus and put it at one end of the house and a statue of Mary at the other end of the house. And he told me about how he spent the entire night on his knees praying the rosary, going from one statue to the other. He told me about how his knees were bloody, his pants were ripped, and the two of them the next morning went back to the hospital. And when they got out of the elevator and they walked towards the room where their baby was, they saw the doctor coming out of the room holding their baby. And the doctor was smiling and the baby was smiling. And the doctor said, I don't know what happened here, but he's fine. Take him home. And they knew exactly what had happened. It's faith of people like this that this whole story is about. And I end this presentation with this image of Mary. She appeared to a visionary with 
rays of light coming out of her hands. And the young girl said, Mary, what's that light that's coming out of your hands? And I'd like you to listen to what she said. Mary said, those are the graces available to the world that nobody even thinks to ask for. And as I end this presentation, can you please just let that sink into your heart, what she's saying. Grace is the world word that we Catholics use to describe the power and the love of God. What is Mary telling us? She's saying that there's more of God's love and power here in this world than we can even imagine, that we can even think to ask for. In this world, we have a choice of what kind of life we're going to be living, to be full of ourselves or to be full of grace. We have to choose. And that grace, that love, there's more of it here than we can even imagine. I pray that something happened over the course of this presentation that you would become motivated to want more of that grace in your life, to be a person who is truly full of grace. I know that's what the Blessed Mother prays for. She prays for you nonstop. She prays every day that you and her son will be best of friends and so connected to each other, inseparable from each other. And I pray for that as well, connected to each other, inseparable from each other. And I pray for that as well. I want to thank you for listening and being part of um, this presentation. I hope that you'll invite people you care about uh, to also check out these two videos about the apparitions of Mary. Again, it is a story that many people, even much they love Jesus and they could be a devout Christian or Catholic, they don't know about it. So would you please be somebody that passes this on to them? I want you to know also that I am available to do a live presentation. My live presentation has a couple of things that I couldn't really include here on the YouTube presentation. Uh, that are included there. And sometimes when it's done live, there's an even more powerful effect. I will go anywhere to the ends of the earth to share this story. So I will include here my contact information. If you would like to know a little bit more about each of these apparitions, I put a little book together, which is a summary of this. And you can, here's some information about um, how to get that uh, book either digitally or a paperback. And this will be another way of you maybe sharing with other people the, the power and the wonder of God's love revealed through this story. And I'm hoping that you will grow in your affection of Mary and, and pray the rosary. And also remember that you she has your back. You have a special friend in heaven that never stops praying. And every Hail Mary, we're remembering um, that she is that powerful friend that intercedes and intervenes on our behalf. Okay, so let's close this by praying that prayer that we Catholics say to honor her and to remember her intercession for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Thank you again for being part of this and God bless you and hope to see you if not again in this life, uh, in the next. Keep shining. God bless. Bye.